Hi, I'm Andrew Swan and I'm here with Sam Walkham. We're the team from AGBU who is behind the development of sheep genetics indexes. Today we're presenting a series of videos which describe the modelling within sheep object that which we use to develop the Merino Select research indexes. We hope you'll enjoy the videos. In the previous video, we heard about how we have remade the sheep object model to be more dynamic and better reflect the flock dynamics and management requirements across the production year. A cornerstone of these changes is how we model reproduction, and in particular, the impact it has on costing the feed requirements of the breeding ewe flock. The reasoning behind the need to update the sheep object model is primarily around how reproduction is now represented in ASBVs. In 2021, the reproduction traits evolved from number of lambs born and number of lambs weaned to the component traits, conception, litter size and ewe rearing ability. This means breeders are now in a position to be more targeted in how they improve the net weaning rate of their system. Consequently, as shown in this figure, the value of increasing litter size declines in flocks with higher reproduction, and it becomes more important to reduce the percentage of dry ewes and make sure that lambs on the ground survive, and then it is to have more lambs per ewe. Transitioning to use the component traits within the sheep, sheep object modelling allows, allows us to be more accurately account for the impact of changes in the components of reproduction and their impact on flock management costs, flock structure and culling decisions, and in turn, the impact of these changes on the flock productivity. An aspect of how we better model the impact of reproduction is how we now account for the cost of reproduction on the production levels of the breeding ewe. In essence, reproduction is not free, and the impact of increasing reproduction needs to be accurately costed. One of these costs is how reproduction impacts the wool production of the breeding ewe flock. Previous agri research has shown that ewes that fall pregnant and raise a lamb will produce a lighter and lower quality fleece. Consequently, whilst the ewes' genetics merit for wool production traits isn't necessarily declining, a flock or season showing a higher reproductive rate will be associated with a decline in the wool production as ewes prioritise the demands of reproduction ahead of wool production. This cost of wool production is now modelled far more accurately within the sheep object model, providing a far more accurate economic weighting on reproduction. Along with modelling changes to produce a more dynamic understanding of the impact of changes in reproduction, we have substantially improved the feeding model. Utilising the current feed standards, we can now model the feed requirements of every animal on the farm on every day, accounting for the needs of the animals to meet the requirements of maintenance, growth, gestation, lactation and wool growth. This modelling is dynamic enough to respond to variations in feed availability, feed quality and supplementation rates across the production year. The byproduct of these changes is that we are now better modelling the energy requirements of the breeding ewe flock and the impacts of changes in reproduction, wool production and adult size on the feed costs within the production system. The most significant of these is the impact of reproduction, as shown in the diagram. The energy requirements of the ewe during late gestation and periods through lactation often exceed her natural capacity to consume enough feed, and as a consequence, the ewe will rely upon her own body reserves to meet the demand. This will lead to losses in weight and condition, the scale of which is dependent on the number and size of lambs she raises through to weaning. The model responds to this by capturing the cost of feed to regain that lost weight and condition, so that ewes enter the next joining period at condition score 3, as per lifetime ewe guidelines. Consequently, the value of condition in a breeding ewe is simply aligned with the feed cost associated with recovery after weaning a lamb. The reasons why the ewe is in better condition are not fully clear. Maybe she is more efficient or maybe she has greater appetite. But we do know that compared to her contemporaries, at a defined point she has a larger body reserves to call upon. This means that the amount of feed required to get her back to body condition score 3 at joining will be reduced, and in turn she has a lower cost to the system. It should be noted that the model has been developed to be in a position to respond to new information as our understanding of how to model efficiency and appetite differences improves. Along with improving how condition score is modelled, sheep object now models the impact of adult weight far more accurately. While strong positive genetic correlations exist between early growth and adult weight, current indexes all contain a negative, negative economic weighting on adult weight. This negative economic value on adult weight occurs as increases in adult weight lead to increased maintenance demands and in turn increased feed consumption and costs. These weightings aim to help cap adult weight, in other words, providing a balanced approach as we try to bend the growth curve. Hopefully this helps provide a greater understanding of an important aspect of the modelling behind the new Merino Select Research Indexes related to feed costs and resilience in breeding ewes. More information is available on the Merino Select website and from SG and Agri staff.